All right. I had to take a water break there. Sorry. This is part two of Black Attorneys in Memphis. What are they good for? Huh? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Black lawyers. Huh? In Memphis, what are they good for? Absolutely nothing. I'm saying it again. Uh, huh. Good God. Black lawyers in Memphis, what are they good for? Absolutely nothing. I'm saying it again. Uh. So this is part two. The other one was short because I, I know in my passion, I'm uh, speaking. Uh, I'm back. So uh, Mary Mac, come on back and everybody. But anyway, what, what the, what's that purpose? What is their purpose? And Mary Mac, maybe you can call, come in. Can I, can I, are you in a position, Mary Mac, where you can talk to me live and, let, and explain to me who this person is before I go any further? Because I have, I have quite a bit to say about these black attorneys in Memphis. You know, are you, uh, I can press you in, I think, or send me an invite to, to talk live with me. And I'll take I'll take conversations for anybody who wants to come live. You say if, if there's a black attorney in Memphis, they don't say much. That's right, Mary Mac. That's what I'm talking about. They're too busy trying to work with Morgan Keegan and FedEx and get corporate jobs. I, I've never heard of such a thing. I've never seen. I've never witnessed such a phenomena in the city of Memphis, where all these black lawyers are bucking and buying to get corporate jobs. Instead of opening up private practices and or even, okay, or even uh, creating a nonprofit where you educate the people on the laws that are destroying them every day. Maybe I need to take my ass to law school and show them how it's done. I may not make $10 million a year, but I'll take $150,000 on giving back. I think I, that, that'll give me a my volume up hold on okay well it's up they probably should be taking their ass to Howard Law School or Southern University Law School or Texas Southern Law School where maybe they get some kind of a some kind of you know black culture about them and some kind of sense of ownness when it comes to our people I'm a social worker I'm a master's level social worker and all I think about what is it that I can do to improve the lives of other African Americans, other black folks, particularly black males. And the last few years, that's what I've been doing. <clears throat> in my, um, I turned it up, Mary Mack, and don't go any further than this. All right, damn, okay, as far as it'll go. Okay. And so, I'm, as a master's level social worker, I'm always thinking, you know, black folks. Always. You know, that, that keeps me distracted. And I, and I know what? I'm, I'm old enough. I'm older now. It, does, it doesn't bother me as much. Sometimes it does, you know, to see the, the, the lack of activity you know, or, I guess, progress as it relates to, to our people. But in the city of Memphis, it just, it's so weird. You see all these black attorneys there, and you don't see none of them standing up for, you know, the Innocence Project. What's going on with black kids in juvenile court? What's going on with the black people at 201 Popular? They have hell. We might as well have all white attorneys. They might have better better uh, representation. So what is the purpose of <clears throat> every time you look around, they got their damn advertisements around, want black people to oh, uh, 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 retain, their, or attain, yeah, retain their services. But what do you do in a community that benefits black people? Y'all know... We know what black people need. We need fight for just need fights for justice. 
And again, in my first video before it got cut off, I'm, I'm going to pose the question again or make a challenge. Look up the Innocence Project and give me the numbers of black attorneys who are a part of the Innocence Project. And the Innocence Project project is what mainly helps to get black men who are falsely accused of crimes and given these long, extensive uh, jail prison sentences. It gets them out of jail and you don't have... You don't have black lawyers participating in that. Not only black, not black, you don't have black lawyers, but you don't have black law students. Why aren't the black law students a part of the Innocence Project as a practice on internship? The Innocence Project is mainly white folks, Jews. Um, uh, you got Jews and white kids, white students, who have helped to get all of these black men out of jail. What is, what is that about? It's weird. It's the weirdest, it's the weirdest thing. Uh, who's that? There are a group of attorneys that had Nathan Bedford statue removed. That's easy, Janet. I mean, I'm sorry, Mary Mack. That's, <laughs> that's easy. She said, uh, Mary Mack said, there was a group of attorneys that had Nathan Bedford statue removed. You know what? Willie Harris was supposed to have done that. And I, and I get it. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't, that's, it was like, that was easy. I know you're talking about Van, what's his name, Van Horn, Van Johnson, or Van Horn. You know, that's easy. Because the, the mayor is supposed to have done that, but Willie Harrington, no old ass, didn't want to touch it. Now he want to run for mayor again. How about you sit your octogenarian, smart mouth, oatmeal eating ass on down somewhere, Willie Harrington. But you know what? Well, I, even though I just said that, and Willie Harrington even threatened to, as he said, kick my ass one <laughs> years ago. I like to, you know, for some reason, I like to see him win again. I know it, it's awful. Just to see if it'll help boost the morale of blacks in the city. Oh, I'm, I'm right on Mary Mack. I'm sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> you know, I like to see old Willie do it again, just out of a. Uh, just to be tickled and see if he'll he'll uh, boost boost the morale of uh, the city of Memphis. Willie Harrington back his mayor again. That would be too funny. And I come home and I, I I actually I would actually come home and participate in that after party. If Willie Harrington uh, <laughs> were to pull it off, I tell you, I come home for that. It's it is just uh, too much, too much. Oh, Willie, sleep, Willie. Get the hell out of my office. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. <laughs> That's all he left black folks with were quotes. And Barack Obama left with an Al Green song. But for some reason, just to shake the city up, I like to see old, <laughs> old Willie. 79-year-old Willie. Hell, I'd like to see him win again. I don't think I would vote for him, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to... Uh, <laughs> Just, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> forgive me. Let's see old Willie win again. Yeah, okay, what you got now is uh, Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is a life for me. You go with that Strickland. <laughs> That's what Memphis got now. So embarrassing. Mayor Max said the city needs a young 20-something-year-old mayor to run the city. But not just any young 20-something-year-old Mary Mac. It needs to be a black-minded, a strong... I prefer a black male. I prefer a, a strong black male with the na last name Muhammad. With a black wife, last name, her name is Fatima Muhammad. And with children named Wali, Omar Muhammad, and uh, Abdullah Muhammad. A real black... <laughs> <laughs> and they and they love the minister. I like to see those that kind of black young man. Well, he doesn't have to be married, but as long as he's strong. And when we talk to him, we mention Nat Turner, or Marcus Garvey, that black dude to know what I'm talking about. You know, like Jackson, Mississippi, got a strong little strong young brother. Uh, at some point, I don't know if he's still mayor there now. That's what Memphis. Uh, that's what Memphis needs. A young, strong black male. I, not, I don't hardly trust black females, especially the ones that wear weave to be the leader, because they have this liberalness about them. 
unless he comes out of the nation, her last name is Sher her name is Sherazad Ali or Dr. Ava Muhammad or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, out of that sister, but just some regular sister named Lakeisha Jackson running for mayor, but she got a law degree and a long weave. I don't want her. I, I wouldn't vote for her. I don't trust these sisters wear weaves to be in leadership because see that weave represents trying to. <clears throat> trying to be as close to the white woman to be equal to the white woman as possible. So when I see a sister with, with a weave and she's running for a political office, I don't vote for her. Mm -mm. I don't. And don't let her be obese. I'm surely not going to vote for no fat chick. Because if you don't have enough discipline to keep your weight down and keep your health together, I don't trust you in public office. I don't. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's me. So again, you got all these uh black attorneys. <laughs> got all these black attorneys in Memphis, and Memphis is moving backwards. So what the, what the hell are they doing? You got these black attorneys, and I'll even say I'll go even further, cause black attorneys are full of shit in Memphis. You know who else is full of shit? Black real estate professionals. They full of shit too. They don't. <clears throat> black ownership should be so high. Or at least the knowledge of black home ownership or real estate ownership in Memphis should be so high with all those black black real estate representatives. But I know the main companies are white, but it's got a lot of black ones. But I will say this. This is one sister that's on Bev Johnson's show. I love to hear her talk to. And what's her name? Real smart. And she has a, she has a network of other smart people. Uh, realtors, young realtors. I forget her name, but she comes on Bev Johnson's show once a month. Whenever I try to, whenever Bev has her on, I try to, um, I try to listen to her show. She's a, a graduate of a historically black college as well. That's probably why she's so smart and she's so about the community and teaching the community. But that's only one of her and her and her network of real estate folks. So if I ever need some real estate or anything done, I'm gonna definitely call this sister. Now, I, her name will come to me later on. But uh, but other than that, you know, there's so many black professionals there in Memphis that, that, that can help Memphis move forward. They know Memphis is up Shit's Creek. They know Memphis has got too many poor people. They know all of this. They got all these professors, professional black folks. Oh, hold on one second. Let me stop. Mary Mack says, remember, most of black realtors don't own the real estate companies. You're right. I just said that. You're correct. And I'm just, just wondering, you know. But what is it? What I'm telling you, because of you know, we have Jesus Christ. If blacks did not have Jesus Christ in the city of Memphis, Memphis would be 2019 and beyond. But because, you know, guess what? The violence in Memphis wouldn't be so high if they did not have Jesus Christ. Now, that's not her name, Twyla. It's another sister. She comes on Bev Johnson show and I love her voice and just the way she presents. I'm just in in, in love. I, I love her. Uh, she's happily married with a family and a black man and all of that cool stuff. She came out of what school did she come out of? I'm about to look her up on Facebook. And first of all, I can remember her name. Um uh, dang, she comes on once a month on Bev Johnson show, but I love her. Uh, but yeah, um, but they're they're no they're not proactive in the city. You know, whenever I come home, it's like, man, I see stuff going up. But I know it has no black hands attached to it. You know, it's still you no know, uh, uh, Rusty Heineman and and the Belts and Turleys and those same group of the same white family that's running Memphis, and the black folk just sit around and and act as if uh, they're not even part of the city. And I'll forever preach uh, preach blackness in a majority black city. That's why when when I when I read the stories about South Africa the, the, during the apartheid years, I, for some reason I don't have that much sympathy. I said, "How you got five million black folks and five hundred thousand white folks? Five hundred thousand white folks running five million blacks? I mean, and dogging them out? It's because they had Jesus Christ. If Black Memphis did not have Jesus Christ, I I swear, I swear we'd be a lot further. Violence wouldn't be so bad." Because they don't have Jesus Christ. See, that's the that is the mechanism that teach that teaches self hatred and self victimization or victimhood. 
I can't do nothing without Lord Jesus. I, I, without, without you, Lord, I couldn't be possible. And without you, Jesus, oh my God. Oh, Jesus. You know, all that kind of foolishness. If you didn't have, if, if black folks did not have Jesus Christ, we'd be a lot further. We'd even love each other more. If there was no black church in Memphis, there was no Jesus Christ, we would like each other more. We would, and teen pregnancy, again, would not even be, it, it wouldn't even be at the high rate that it is. Poverty would even be bad if black folks didn't have Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ teaches niggas. I'm thinking mentality, but not the race. You know, teaches black folks. Well, you know, you can't take it to heaven, so you might well be poor out here. You know, the heavy, the burden, the bright of the crown when you come and sit by me on the throne. Oh, glory. <laughs> See, that kind of foolishness. And there are black folks who believe that. And so they're going through so much depression. The mental health has increased. The liquor stores have multiplied by 10. Because one thing about it, when your mental health is gone, you want to do something to ease the pain. Smoke blunts. And all you weed smokers in Memphis, y'all tell them folks, they with the shit. Just cut it out. You know, the weed, there's nothing godly or earthly about smoking no damn weed. Cut it out. It keeps you out of work. It keeps you away from around people like me. I can't stand a blunt smoker. It's ugly. And then females that smoke blunts, blunts make women ugly. Just like liquor and crack and, and meth and heroin and all of that. But weed seems to be the accepted uh, drug of choice. I mean, everybody's supposed to look over that. But no, nah, don't be smoking weed around me. That's, that's ugly. If you're a girl, that's ugly. And it shows on your face, too. And in your hair and in your nails and, and in your speech pattern. We smoking and women, they, just like tattoos and women, have no business matching. Yeah, I said it, but you know. I, I, I have not kicked a chick with a tattoo on her body out of my bed yet. But I have not reproduced a married one either. So, it is what it is. Just like chicks with weave. I don't fool with them like that, but it doesn't make baby not be fine. Uh, oh, Sheila... Wilson says compliance culture and what's that poverty preference? I'm sorry, I don't I don't know what that is. Oh Sheila, Osh Oshala Wilson, I don't know what that is. But uh, but oh shucks, hold on a minute, y'all. But uh, anyway, I started this. If you go back and look at the first video, I was talking about why. So what is the purpose of having black attorneys in the city of Memphis? You know, why? When it's a majority black city, you don't see any uh, black attorney standing up and leading the fight to end a lot of the injustices in the city of Memphis. You don't. You never see one on the news. See, and y'all mentioned this one person. Maybe he is uh, a, 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 a figure in the city as an attorney. But there should be at least 500 to 1,500 attorneys per week standing up for an issue in the city of Memphis. It doesn't make any sense. See, we can blame racism all day long because racism is never going away as long as white folks are still alive. But that's 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 why it has to go in order because that's how they maintain their 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 fragile ego of privilege and superiority. Racism. So unless you're gonna get some missiles and tanks and all that and destroy all the Caucasians, well just but what we can do is create a strategic plan like every other like every ethnic group has done and the city they got Asians you got Mexicans they, what they do is what we don't do is we they come together and pool their resources not only their monetary resource but their physical resources they they marry one another <clears throat> they reproduce to one another they send each other to each other's schools and they educate each other black people don't do that we take our kids out of our neighborhood send them to uh, I guess MUS and all these other schools these let white folks make an Oreo out your child and then they get around real white folks and then they get called nigga like oh my god I thought we we're all here together we're all one people we're human beings just just shut up and poverty poverty is brought on because of the belief in Jesus Christ <clears throat> well Rico what should what should black attorneys and black folks in Memphis should be believing in I always say, look in the mirror, yourself. But it doesn't hurt when, you, uh, when you've when you read a couple of books by Dr. Claude Anderson and watched a couple of videos by Dr. Claude Anderson. He has, he has two books for all my smart folks out there. No, hold on a second. 
<coughs> um, let's see. There's a book called Black Labor, White Wealth. And another book that's called Powernomics. Those, are, those should be the two main books that blacks should be reading on Sunday mornings instead of the Bible. Man, if I can wave a wand and, and just make all the Bibles disappear and put one of those books, both of those books in black people's hands, I guarantee within one year you'll see a change. You'll see a change. <clears throat> in the way we do things up here. I'm, I'm putting the break up here. And also, two videos. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Claude Anderson has two videos. Uh, one is called Exceptional People. Y'all write this down. Exceptional People. And the other one is called Inappropriate Behavior. Inappropriate Behavior. And a lot of cool interviews with Dr. Boyce Watkins. If you want to find out who this guy is, and y'all need to, it'll be great if uh, black folks who have the platforms in Memphis would, uh, you know, Invite this guy to the churches, to all of these boys groups and girls groups. <clears throat> that should be that's who y'all should be inviting instead of Reverend this and Doctor that. They don't know shit. You should have those folks because it's time out for playing games and hearing people to do a yes, Lord. It's time out for the Frankie Ray entertainment. It's time out for education and action. Okay. So again, black attorneys, y'all full of shit in Memphis, and it's time out. And if you're having a black attorney that's running for political office, ask him, ask him or her. Why is it that you, you have a law degree, but you're not practicing law that would benefit these issues that's going on in Memphis? <clears throat> Being a part of the NAACP and 100 niggas of, of America and 100 Negroes of Memphis, that's stuff. That, that stuff doesn't impact black folks positively. What it does is make, it pads the resumes of those members of those groups. Even the black fraternities, black sorority, that shit doesn't do anything to uh, improve the lives of black Memphis. That's just stuff that they can say, well, I'm a member of this. I'm a member of that. Okay. Yeah, like, I pledge to. Okay. That doesn't do anything. These little elitist groups, they say, I want to represent black people. But if you ask who Dr. Claude Anderson, they wouldn't couldn't tell you. If you ask those same group of attorneys, those same black Greeks, who is Sherazad Ali? Who is Dr. Joy Leary? Who is Dr. Francis Cress Welsing? Who is <clears throat> Dr. Amos Wilson? Who is Steve Coakley? You know, ask them who the scholars are. Dr. John Henry Clark. Ask, I guarantee you they won't know who the scholars are. Because that's not why they are in those organizations. To push the agenda of Nat Turner, of Marcus Garvey. They're not here to push the knowledge of Dr. Amos Wilson. They're not here to spread the educational information of Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu. Countering the conspiracy to destroy black boys. They're not here for that. They're there to pad their little resume and say, I was a state representative. I, yes, I'm an attorney. And, I, and I'm right over AKA and Omega Sci Fi. Okay. Uh, alpha by Alpha and COVID. Okay. That's what they want to do. Get rid of No, just cut it out. Again, I'm going to close by saying this. I don't, don't want to belabor this. I think y'all get the point. What's the purpose of having black attorneys in a majority black city that is dead and dying or dead, or dead and dying and dying or dead, however you want to say it? Well, black Memphis are the poor people in a majority black city. I'm talking about just astronomical numbers of poverty. It's just ridiculous. You got all these people, black folks in place to do it, but they won't. And black attorneys could be leading the way as it relates to the unfairness at 2 and one popular. The unfairness in juvenile court on Adams Street. The unfairness in housing. The unfairness in loan lending, loans. The unfairness in the real estate market. The unfairness, the black attorneys have the law degrees. But they won't do it. So why the hell are you going to run for political office? Why? Your law degree could do so much more good. But you have to be black-minded in order for that to work. Y'all going to understand and, and stop viewing me as this militant black dude. Well, you know what? Yeah, I know a lot of you do, when you, and you know if you know me for years, and you know even when I went to my all-black school, Gramlin State University, known as the militant. 
that's a label that people attach to people like me, Nat Turner, Fannie Lou Hamer, Harriet Tubman, Jesus Christ, you know, the real one, not the one that black folks was given to be the lazy losers that we are today, the victims that we are today. You know, anybody that stands up against racism, white supremacy, I mean, but really stands up and then also challenges the quote-unquote, the, the socially engineered nigger in us who challenges single motherhood and, 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 and forces blacks to take responsibility and accountability for their behavior. See, we're the militant ones. And I don't mind. There's not much money in it. I should be in a two-story, I mean, a four-story mansion by now. But, you know, when you, when you speak black, you don't get that black support and that black, you know, upliftment. You, know, upliftment. you get marginalized and pressed in the corner and, and referred to as angry and all that stuff. Uh, Mary Mack says, uh, people are black leaders and activists such as Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Jawan Zuck, and Jufu. Yeah, you're right. Folks like that. That's what I'm talking about. And I know some of you are like, who are those people he's mentioning? Well... If you went to a historically black college or a white university that had an active uh, black studies program or a black student union, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do a little work. Uh, I got some writing to do and some other stuff to do. And uh, it's, always, it's, always, it's always a pleasure to speak on this platform that was created for Memphians by a wonderful Memphian. By a wonderful Memphian. Shout out to Pro Eva Walker. Good luck in your race, good golly. Just running for city councilman, position two. Right on. And she has really earned it because she is, she is Memphis. She is white even. She, she, she kills. She's been killing him for the past 25, 30 years. She's been on it. But uh, anyway, let me read this last one from Mary Mack. Right. Black folks don't want to hear those truths that you have spoken and... On and on, and, and, and so do speak on. I will, Mary Mac. I will. I'll drop in in Memphis, raise your expectations every once in a while. You know, it's, I have a friend, some of you may even recognize me if you see me across the city. And happy Mexican to have it, a margarita. You know, we can have it, a brief conversation, but I don't like talking about stuff outside of Facebook because it doesn't mean anything. But also, you may catch me while I'm hanging out with my girl, Jackie Smith. Oh, at the Civil Rights Museum. That is my girl. Y'all see what's up to her. Y'all support her because what she's doing is right. Jackie Smith over at the Civil Rights Museum. Go and support her. Say what's up to her. And tell her you got her back. And I'll drop off maybe five bucks or two in her little thing now. Anyway, y'all be cool. Memphis Raise Your Expectations. Shout out to North Memphis. My home forever. Even though I may be hosted in another city in the future here and there. But Memphis is where my bread and butter started and was born, raised, and and groomed and all of that. North Memphis, Hollywood, Springdale, New Chicago, Bellwater, Frazier. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Straight from the north. Straight out the north. North Memphis raised. You dig? Mm -hmm. Y'all be cool. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.